Hi everybody, I'm Christina from the Writer Partnerships team at Substack. I hosted a masterclass for writers and creators and we wanted to share that recording with you so it's accessible to everybody. So sit back and enjoy. Here's today's agenda. We're going to cover what Substack is. My hunch is a lot of you already know, but we're going to get into a little bit more detail of what you can actually do here and why it's such a valuable platform. We're going to talk about how to earn money, how to get started. So I kind of distill it down into like the four things you can do right away to get started. I'm going to give you a quick peek into settings and dashboard, just so you can see a little bit of the back end. And then I'm going to talk about how to bring your community with you. I encourage you to grab a notebook. We will be recording this, so don't feel like you have to take a ton of notes. Um, you'll be able to access this recording afterwards, but definitely open up a notebook, like write down things that inspire you. I'm going to be sharing a ton of examples, so hopefully that sparks something for you. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, or you can open up your pub. I know a lot of you already have publications, so you can open up and update things in real time if you like. Right, it's so exciting to see all these numbers go up. Okay, so we're going to start with what is a Substack. What is Substack? Substack started as a place for writers to start newsletters and get paid for their work through subscriptions, but it's now really a place for creators of all kinds where people can host podcasts, share videos, and cultivate their community. It can be a personal media channel for creators, and in some cases, we see people come here and build their own media empires with multiple contributors. You determine which content is free and which content you want to put behind a paywall. And Substack won't charge you to host an email list, Oops. but when you turn on paid, Substack takes 10%. So we don't make money unless you're making money. We handle all the admin, the billing, and the tech, so you can focus on your work. So jumping oops, into it. All right. So at our most basic um, thing, we are and started as an email newsletter. The email newsletter is a direct connection where you can post directly to your audience. So if social media were to go away tomorrow, you own, you have this email list, you have a way to be in touch with your followers. I can't express how important this is. There are no algorithms in the way. So people are opting in to get these newsletters from you in their inbox. That's very valuable retail space they're giving you. Um, and they want to see what you're publishing. It's really easy to import a list if you have one. If you don't, you can come here and grow your own email list. And then you take it with you when you leave. So we don't want you to leave, but we make it as easy to leave um, and export everything as we do to have you come here. We don't own any IP. It's all yours. I get asked this question a lot from writers who are joining the platform. Everything you create is yours. It stays yours. Um, we take no claim to it. So this is Tammy Coker. He's an amazing graphic designer and artist um, and just sharing some screenshots of his beautiful work. He's a great Substack. So Substack is also really a blog and a website. Um, it creates an archive of all of these email newsletters that you're sending out. One of the big benefits of having Substack as your newsletter email provider, as opposed to a MailChimp or a Flowdesk, is that it's creating this archive. So you spend all this time on these newsletters, these emails, and then they just get sent and go away, much like social media, kind of gets lost. But the Substack really creates this beautiful archive. So this is Holly Becker, who, Holly, I know you're here. Um, this is her Substack Decorate. You'll see on here that it's her branding. We do not, you will not see a Substack logo on your Substack. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, one of the things I love that Holly's done, which I always encourage people to do, is she's pinned this post. So if I subscribe tomorrow to Holly's Substack, I can read all this content she's already created. I can come right here and find out exactly what she's all what she's doing here, what I can expect when I subscribe. Um, you can do different layouts. So we actually recently released a bunch of different layouts. Um, for this audience, I'm guessing there's a lot of more visual bloggers, Instagrammers here. I always encourage people to do these really lovely grids so that it, it makes it nice and easy to explore content. And Holly's done a great job here. You should subscribe to her Substack, all of these. You can also host podcasts here. I get surprised at how many people still don't know that we are a podcast hosting platform as well. 
how it works is just like any other platform where um, your podcast will go out on the RSS feed. If you have an existing platform or a podcast, you can move it here. People will still be able to listen um, through Spotify or Apple or however they listen to podcasts. The benefit of having your podcast on Substack is that it's a much richer experience where listeners can then come back and share their thoughts on episodes. So this is Sean King. He has a Substack, but he also has a podcast. And you could see that these little headphones are his podcast episodes. And this enables people to like, you can do richer show notes. You can just share a whole lot more. And then people can give you feedback. This is the fifth column. They were big podcasts that came over from Patreon and sharing them because they are primarily still a podcast. Um, they don't, occasionally they'll do posts, but most of what they do is podcasting here. You can also do video on Substack. Another thing people I talk to still don't always know about. This is Patty Smith. Uh, I absolutely love, yes, it's Patty Smith. So she's huge. She gets great engagement. But what I love about what Patty does here is that she's using the video tool in a really easy way. So you can embed video, you can upload a video, or you can record natively just by opening up your computer, starting a post and hitting record. And Patty does that a lot. And what's nice about this is it creates this real personal connection and intimacy. So she does it while she's on tour, which is awesome. But then she'll do a lot of like from her bedroom, this looks like a hotel room, but <clears throat> she'll do a lot of um, just, you know, she'll be in her bedroom with her cat on her lap talking to her fans. And that's the kind of thing that makes Substack so special is that you can do that with your readers and subscribers and they're going to love it. Another great benefit of being on Substack is that it's an amazing place to create for your community, to cultivate your community. This is Julie Jackson of Subversive Cross Stitch, another old school blogger maker who I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. What I love about this example is that Julie has an e-commerce business, so or a commerce business. She creates these cross stitch kits and she was using another email platform to send out all of her e-com newsletters, and, but she brought it here. And a lot of people think they can't do that, but you absolutely can. So weekly, she sends out updates um, to her whole list about, you know, new products they have, uh, kits, et cetera. But why she moved to Substack is to create a space for her community. So you can see it in the language she uses. This is her welcome page. She says, welcome to the Subversive Cross Stitch Clubhouse. Welcome, pull up a chair. This is our new hangout. She uses that language throughout. So in addition to sending out her e emails, she also sends out updates to her community and she uses different features on Substack to talk to that community. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just gonna probably keep popping. Um, one of the ways she interacts with her community is chat. So chat is a space for writers to host conversations with their subscribers. These are private messages sent only to your subscribers and it's meant to encourage discussion and conversation. You can access chat I prefer accessing it on the app. If you don't have the Substack app, you should definitely download it. Um, it's really easy to access there, but you can also access it on web. So this is a screenshot from web. And you can see here, <clears throat> when I go to my chat, I can scroll and see all the people I'm subscribed to. Um, and these are all people who have uh, posted chats. And then I can go in. So this is me and Elizabeth Gilbert's. Another thing that you can do with chat is you can make them for paying subscribers only. So it can also be a really nice benefit you offer to your paying subscribers. Notes is, these are short form posts published to your Substack profile and shared with subscribers in the home feed, kind of like our social platform on Substack. Again, I think the best place to access notes is on the app, but you can definitely do it on desktop too. Um, on your computer. So this is me going through notes, just doing a quick scroll. What's great about notes, it's a really, so it's going out to a larger audience than just your subscribers. And it's a really good way for both new readers and new writers to discover you and for you to discover new writers as well. And you can post anything here. People always ask me, what do I do on notes? You can, you know, share a photo from your day. You can share a quote from somebody, something you read on Substack that you loved. You can share photos of um, rabbit or mice. Anyway, um, 
whatever that cute thing was. Okay. So growth, another great benefit of being on Substack is that you're going to naturally grow. I always tell people that being on Substack as opposed to being, you know, having your email newsletter on MailChimp or another flow desk or something is that those are just stagnant. Um, people aren't going to discover you being on Substack. You're part of this whole rich network of readers who want to subscribe to other people. Um, so 20% of paid subscriptions come from the Substack network. And what you're seeing here, this is Evan Ross Katz. Uh, writers can recommend other writers. I love this feature because it reminds me of old school blogging where people had blog roles and they linked to their friends or other blogs um, that they just loved. This is so reminiscent of that for me. And it really is a huge tool for growth for writers here. So you can see that we surface these on your Substack homepage if you want. You don't have to show them there. And then we also show them to your subscribers um, in the subscribe flow and in a few other places. Just to show you the power of this tool, this is my colleague Farah. A lot of you probably know her or subscribe to her amazing Substack. I'm going to preface this to say that Farah has um, a big, she's well known because she was an editor at fashion magazines in the UK. She has a large audience. I'm showing her because she lets us show her numbers graciously. Um, but you can see that she has 25,000 subscribers and 15,000 of those came from recommendations. And yes, this is, you know, she's a person with a big network, um, but I've seen this work amazingly well for writers who have a much smaller audience who are just starting out and growing. It's a really powerful tool. And just a sidebar, because she lets us share these numbers, um, Farah has over 25,000 subscribers, just over 1,000 are paid. And from that, her annual reoccurring revenue is 97,000. So we tell people to shoot for about 5% of your total free subscribers to be paid subscribers. 10% is awesome, but 5% is a great goal. I think she's around four. 4,000 or 4% here. Just some other tools to quickly show you that help you grow on Substack. Cross-posting, this is where you publish a post and someone else can publish it on their Substack. So here's what it looks like. And then tagging. I love this. So this is when you tag someone. So say I've read someone's Substack. I read some great article I want to share and talk about in a post I'm publishing. I can tag them, I can click to their Substack here, but if I hover, it gives me this great card and shows I can subscribe from here too. <laughs> and we're constantly looking at ways to build these growth tools into our product because we wanna do everything we can to help you grow once you're here. Okay, so moving on to how to earn money on Substack, a question I get asked a lot. This is a quote from Elise Lonen, who's been on here for a little over a year, I think, maybe two years. And this is her saying, um, I'd, be making, I'd been making a lot of content for free for a long time and on Instagram. And it felt like people were excited to make a gesture of gratitude. It was a really nice hug. Why I love this is that people come and they're always surprised that people start becoming paying subscribers, but they will, I promise you. People often ask me when to go paid. I always tell them when they launch, your launch moment is a really big moment. So it's a great time to get in front of a lot of people and let them know what you're offering and how they can support you in this new endeavor. People will pay you for the content you create, even if you're not putting any of it behind a paywall. I think that's really important to remember. People who have the means and want to support you will support you. If you're just starting out, well, I always tell people as soon as they launch, you know, make sure that you're showing all of the content you're going to be creating, make everything free the first two weeks, the first month, so that people can see the range of things you're going to be offering and they'll get to understand what they're going to get if they upgrade to paid. Um, if you are just starting out and building your list or getting the hang of it, you can enable paid subscriptions, but wait to start paywalling posts for a while before you grow that audience. I just always think you should have it on um, because you deserve to get paid for the content you're creating. So these are two examples of people who've launched recently who went paid right away and them doing a great job of why they're doing that. 
If you don't feel comfortable turning on paid right away, we now have pledges, um, which I love because this gives people an opportunity to show you that they would support you and to tell you they're raising their hand. They're saying, hey, if you ever turn on paid, here's here's what I'm going to come in at. And you get these lovely notes. So William here is probably pledged. This is probably founding member um, level. And he's you get these nice notes. So you, you know... Um, what it just makes you feel good um and then as soon so people enter their credit cards here so as soon as you turn on paid all of these people will automatically become paying subscribers and they know that when they're pledging so i'm gonna go oops i'm gonna go over a range of what you can offer um we'll share a few models i'm gonna okay So one model is everything is free. You keep everything free, but you use the social mission of your work to encourage paid subscriptions. Again, people never believe me that people will pay if everything is free, but I promise you that they will. This is Anne Cadet. She has a great subset called Cafe Anne. She is a bestseller with hundreds of paid subscribers and nothing is paywalled, but she has that option on so people can pay her and they do. And you can see in her subscription levels here, she's really playful. Um, you know, she, she does send you a surprise item in the mail. If you become a paid subscriber, if you become a founding member, you get her respect. Um, so that is everything free. And a, a lot of people do that. <clears throat> this is sorry for my coughing. Well, um, this is a freemium model. This is probably one of the more common things that people do. And I highly encourage this too. This is when some of your posts are free and some of them are paywalled. So something you'll probably hear a lot of us say, and if you've been reading, um, you know, what we publish on, on Substack or been with Substack for a while, you'll know that we often say to keep your best work free. The reason for that, it feels counterintuitive, but the reason for that is the stuff that people really want from you, um, your, your most popular stuff, people are going to share it. It's going to be a great way to bring new readers in. So it can be that like top of funnel, bringing in new free subscribers that you can then like hopefully convert to paid. And then what you should pay wall should be that extra access to you. So any sort of bonus content behind the scenes, um, really special stuff is great stuff to pay wall. There's a ton of different models, but this is a pretty common one. This is Holly Whitaker of Recovering. I think this is her old branding, but she does a great job with this. She's creating this community for people in recovery. So for her, it's really important that some of her content is free so that people can access these resources. Another model is giving paid subscribers access to the community. So this is when you keep posts free or some posts free, but you're paywalling that community, the community aspects like comments, chat, and events. This is Tara Schuster. Uh, she's written many books. Uh, she has a really big community of journalers journaling around her. And so she's created this nice community on Substack. When you becoming, become a paying member, I think it's called the Glow Getters Club, which I love. And you get access to that community. So she calls that out here. Um, Tara does these monthly journaling challenges, and if you're a paid subscriber, you get access to that. And it's this whole community of people who are doing these journaling exercises alongside with you. So this is another model that works really nice. And then the last one I'm going to share is the personal paywall. I call it the personal paywall. Um, it can be like exclusive. <clears throat> this is when people paywall all posts, but use the free preview tool to share teasers. This works best if you're already sharing a lot of free work elsewhere, on, like on social media. So this example I'm sharing is Joy Cho. And Joy of Ojoy, oh you probably know her. Um, she, she's been creating content on the internet for a very long time. She's had a blog. She does a ton of partnerships. She creates a lot of content for social media. When she came to Substack, um, it was important, and I think this is important for everyone, to decide what are you going to do on Substack that's different from anything else you do so that people come to Substack and know they can get content from you that they're not going to be able to get anywhere else. So for Joy, she really wanted a space where she could talk about 
mental health and wellness within specifically the Asian community and to talk about her journey um, with therapy, with coaching, about her kids. And to her, that was really important to keep that paywalled and to create a safe space around it. So she paywalls everything she posts, but she inserts a paywall and anyone can do this. So you decide where that paywall is going to go. Um, sometimes she puts it like way up top. So you can't really read a lot. And sometimes she puts it all the way down. So you get a good amount of her post. Um, so that's another great thing to do. Okay. How's everyone doing? I'm not going to look at the comments or the chat because I'll just get super distracted. Um, but we're going to move on to some actionable things. So here's where if you haven't been writing stuff down, I'm going to just like pause for a second, going to read a quote, pull out your notebook, open up your settings page. These are things that I like to tell writers to do before they start. You don't have to do all of them before you start but I think they're important to pay attention to. So this is a quote from Rachel Carton of Lincoln Bio. She says, there are few communities like a Substack community. It's not a connection based on how an algorithm is feeling that day. It's a real deep and meaningful connection that requires work and care and investment to grow. My Substack started by me literally just saying, I wanna build the social media resource I wish existed. What's something you wish existed? write it. So why I love this quote is because it's so important to think about what you want to do here and what you'll be offering to the world before you start. Uh, figure that out and then let people know what that is. And what I'm going to go through are a bunch of um, places on your Substack where you should be communicating that. And I'll share a bunch of examples that hopefully inspire you. Okay, so the one-liner this is where you communicate your value pro proposition to your subscribers. I come from book publishing. I spend a lot of time in book publishing. So I often refer to this as your elevator pitch, your one to two sentence reason for why someone should buy your book, read your book. Same for here. What is your value proposition? What are you going to be giving me that is going to make me want to subscribe to your Substack? Always think about, I have a marketing brain too, but always be thinking about what value am I offering? Like what, why does a reader, why does someone need what I'm sharing here? How's it going to help make their life better? So this is, um, so this, what you're looking at is the welcome page. This is a highly converting page. <clears throat> this is Emily Atkin of Heated. So she writes about environmental issues and her one liner is a newsletter for people who are pissed off about the climate crisis. It's succinct, it's clear, it tells me who it's for and the tone I'm going to get reading it, right? So this immediately appeals to me. She's really packed a lot in, in one, one sentence there. This is Caroline Chambers, what to cook when you don't feel like cooking. Killer name for a substack that also tells me what my value, what the value I'm going to get is. Uh, hers is one ridiculously impressive cleat complete meal recipe delivered to your inbox every Sunday morning that dirties minimal dishes and requires under an hour of time. That is packed in a sentence. Um, but it tells me what I'm going to get, how often I'm going to get it, and what it's going to do for my life. So if I'm a busy mom, if I'm in school, I'm going to be able to like get these recipes that don't take a lot of time, that don't make a huge mess. Really good one-liner there. This is Julia Tertian of Keep Calm and Cook On, a weekly newsletter to help you feel calm and empowered in your kitchen from a best-selling cookbook author. I know what I'm going to get. I know how it's going to make me feel. And I have the authority of who I'm getting the information from. I think this is a really great thing to do if you're a blogger who's been writing on the internet about a particular topic for 20 years five years even, uh, if you're a registered nurse, whatever your expertise is, if you can fit it in your one-liner, great. If not, make sure you talk about it in your about page. But it's great to let people know what your authority is or what your expertise is on the topic. Even if you're writing about snacks and you're like a crazy snacks person, you can be an expert in that. Okay, <laughs> pausing to cough, um, about page. So in more detail, your about page is where you're going to tell prospective readers what they'll get from you and why they should subscribe. 
So I'm going to share a couple about pages. I'm going to take a cup, a sip of my tea. I wish I could look at the chat and talk to you guys, but it would really distract me. Um, okay, so this is Maggie Smith. She is a poet. Um, this is her about page. Nice, simple, clean. I love a photo on your about page because again, it's about that connection that I'm going to have to you. That's what people really crave and want. Um, and in this first paragraph here, Maggie's talking about what dear life means to her, like why she named her substack dear life. It helps me understand what I'm going to get here. And then she really clearly outlines what you get as a free subscriber versus what you get as a paid subscriber. That's going to help you with converting free subscribers to paid. You have to remind people again and again that you have this other thing and what they get if they upgrade to paid. She also has a subscribe button up here that you can't see. Make sure you put a subscribe button on your about page. This is Carissa Potter of People I've Loved. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, what I love about why I'm sharing this and what I love about what Carissa did is she created this nice visual hit of all of her paid tiers. I like this because not everybody's going to read your whole about page and this pops out, lets me know again what I'm going to get here. And then once you have this as an asset, you can share it in your welcome emails. You can share it in social and other posts. I'm guessing there's a lot of creative people in the audience. Um, so I wanted to share this. And then of course, Carissa does a great job of sharing um, what her expertise are, the books she's published, a little bit about her company and what she's going to, what you're going to get from her Substack. This is Virgie Tover. I love the way this looks. I, it feels so branded and rich. I'm sharing this because Virgie does an excellent job of sharing her mission, her mission, which is another thing you should really think about when you're filling out these places and thinking about communicating to your readers. Right at the top of her about page, Virgie says, I'm Virgie and my entire life is about ending weight-based discrimination and anti-fat bias and helping to create a world where body diversity is celebrated, not feared. I'm salt. Great. You know, I get a really clear, and it just is a lovely, the way she's done this, it looks lovely. And then she gets into the, the details. So those are all great things to think about as you create your about page. Welcome emails. I just wanted to call out because I work with a lot of writers and they often don't, they overlook these welcome emails. This is in your settings. I'll show you in a little bit where you can access those. Um, and the welcome emails get automatically sent after someone subscribes. It's a place to thank people for subscribing and then to have a call to action. So remind them what else you have, what else they can do for you because they want to, they're your fan. So this is Yasmin Cheyenne. Uh, she has great welcome emails, nice and simple. I love, again, a photo. Um, but what she does is really clever. So she thanks them for subscribing, tells them a little bit about what they're going to get, and then reminds them that, hey, we also have, I also have this paid tier. And she gives them a discount, which is super smart, um, if they upgrade to paid. Chances are people aren't going to automatically, if they've just become a free subscriber, they're probably not immediately going to become a paid subscriber. But it's so important to let them know that you have this other level they can become a part of. Call to action to your free subscribers is to upgrade. Call to action to your paid subscribers should always be to share. Those are your most dedicated hardcore fans who are most likely to bring in new readers and share your work. So this is her email to her paid subscribers. <clears throat> so letting the world know what you're doing is very important. And your first post, um, we call it the announcement post, Really, it can be an adaptation of your about page. So it can be, it'll hit, it should hit all the same things you've done and talked about on your about page. It can be a little bit more casual. You can share a little bit more personal story if you want. Um, but once you decide on a launch date, create an announcement post where you're telling people, hey, here's what I'm launching. Here's what I'm doing. Come and join along. Just going to share one example of a launch post. This is Elizabeth Holmes. What I love about her launch post is that she did this voiceover. That's another great thing you can do on Substack is you can do voiceovers for all of your posts. And again, it's creating that personal connection. So I can listen to her telling me about her new endeavor here. Okay, 
I'm going to sip my tea, take a break. Mm. I hope you guys are doing well. So jumping behind the scenes, I just wanted to really quickly, <clears throat> excuse me, show you all what it looks like. I know some of you are probably active on Substack and this is going to be nothing new, but I know that there are a lot of you here who might not have started yet. So just showing you a little bit of what we offer for data and what the dashboard looks like. Again, this is Farah, who so graciously lets us share her stats. We give you great insight into how your posts are performing. And I always tell people, look at look at this. Like we, So we've actually just rolled out some new, well, not that new, but um, some more data. So you can go a little bit deeper um, on all of your post performance. What I tell people to look at is look at your posts and see how many paid subscribers or how many free subscribers you're getting from each post. What's the open rate? What's the engagement looking like? Because those are going to be signals from your audience telling you they want more of that content. So that kind of information can really help um, inform your content strategy. What's next? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you how to create a post. This is my tiny little sub stack, but um, I used to use Blogger. I'm guessing a lot of you use Blogger. To me, our editor is so simple. It's so easy to use. So I just wanted to show you this a gif of <coughs> me creating a test post. It's really easy. Um, we, you know, you write your, your title, your subtitle, uh, you put in your copy. We have a bunch of buttons you can insert, which you should always ins insert a subscribe button and in your post. That's it. Super simple. And then another thing I love that I feel like people often miss. So I wanted to call out is that I feel like one of the things that gets people nervous about starting is, oh, what images am I going to share? You don't have to come with images. We have this amazing, amazing database. It's Unsplash. So it's connected to our editor. You can search for images. Here's me looking for kittens. These are the kittens I wanted to share. You can resize it. You can rename, you know, you can edit the um, caption. And then just to show you, this is, oh, we'll wait till it goes around. I think 95% of the images I use on my Substack are from Unsplash. I'm waiting till it goes back there. Let's see if it does. Um, so it can just look really nice. Don't let that don't let that stop you, and definitely use that resource. Of course, I hit this at the wrong time. Anyway, um, okay. And then this is what the settings look like. So all of those things I just talked about that um, your publication name, your one liner. This is where you're going to edit all of those. You'll go to your dashboard settings. Here's where you edit those welcome emails. Um, a note about your publication name, know that you can change that as many times as you want. What I always tell people, here's me not doing this, um, but I always tell people to make your URL, your subdomain, your name, so that you get good SEO, so that people can find you. It's easy to remember. Um, and then you might want to change. You know, If I were to make this fever dream, what if I want to change it in a year? Um, this enables you to just change it if you want to change it up. Okay, so layout, oh, website and design. So you can do a good amount of customization. We're always unrolling more and more customization. And I wanna make sure you guys know that in settings, go to website theme, and this is where you can play around with different layouts. You can do grids, you can do, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do a list. This is where you also can change your background color. We have some fonts you can pick. So this is important, um, definitely don't miss that. Okay, this is the last section, you guys. How are we doing on time? Um, so we're gonna open it up to questions soon. This is how to bring your community with you. I'm gonna preface this by saying a lot of these examples are very specific to Instagram. I happen to work with a lot of folks who are coming from Instagram um, and the class, was focused on you know bloggers and creators from Instagram, but I think you'll get ideas from this no matter what your how big your audience if you have one or not. Um, so I'm hoping there's stuff for everyone in here. Put your link in your bio everywhere you are. This is Ruby. She was a contestant on the Great British Bake Off. In her Instagram bio, she has a link straight to her Substack. 
What I love that she's done here is that she links to her Instagram in her nav bar from her Substack. So I think that's a nice idea because it can give people this complete picture of who you are online. So I have people use that nav bar to link back to different sections on their website, to link back to, you know, sometimes Pinterest, um, Instagram. I know a lot of people use Linktree and Linktree is fine. If you have Linktree, I really encourage you to put your Substack as your top link. Um, the more clicks people have to go through to get to your Substack, the less conversion you're going to see. Make use of Substack's shareable images. We make these incredible media assets now. They get emailed to you after you publish a post. Use them. I think they look lovely. We're seeing people use them more and more. We're always also making them better. These are three people who've used the stories um, image in their Instagram stories. What I love about sharing in stories is that you can now, you can just create a direct link that goes straight to your um, Substack. So it looks really nice. Um, this is how you access them too per post. So if you want to find it for an older post, go to that post, click on those three dots, and then it will, um, I forget exactly what it says. It'll show you again. Here we go. <laughs> View shareable images. And then it shows you all the different size. You can share from here too. And then it shows you all the different vertical square. We give you tons of options. And super exciting, there's also a video that gets created. Um, I've only played around with it a little bit, but it's awesome. There's a shareable video. So definitely check that out. And again, this is something um, we created this to make it easier for you to share what you're doing here. Make stories a highlight. Very specific to my Instagram people, but um, put your Substack in a highlight. You can call it newsletter. You can call it Substack. You can call it whatever you want, but you're going to be sharing. You should be sharing all of your posts that you do in your stories. You should have a place to house them. It's a nice signal to people when they come to your profile on Instagram that you have this newsletter. I always tell people, make your first story in your highlight of how you subscribe, right? So um, here's how to subscribe. Click straight to your um, subscribe page on Substack. Email your people. Even if you don't have like an existing email list, email your friends, email your family, tell them you are here, tell them what you are doing. This is Joy Cho. She has a separate email list. Um, and this is how she told people about her new project on Substack. Substack, <laughs> that's a hard word to say a lot, you guys. Um, anyway, so do this. So even if like, you'll be amazed at how much people will share and how much they'll wanna support you. Video announcement. So again, that personal, like giving people that personal connection to you. This is um, Stephanie Dandler. And this is a reel she shared on Instagram when she started her newsletter that did really well. And it was her just talking about her newsletter, what she was going to be doing here, why she was doing it. Um, this is Joy Cho and Joy here. I think she's talking about just a post she shared um, in her stories. And then this is Kate Aaron's and when she launched on Substack, she just did a video post, which I loved because it was her talking about why she came to Substack, what she was going to be offering here, um, and the space she wanted to create. Share your branding and information about your project, even if it's not like amazing branding. Don't worry, like just let people know what you're doing. I love this example that Ben has. So this is what Ben did when he launched. He did a carousel in his feed. So when you launch, share in stories, share in your feed also. Um, I like, I'm sharing this, it looks great, but I'm also sharing it because he has. he's really smart about how he did this. So this is just his Substack. Here's his what is, what is it? People are gonna wanna know that. Here's what we're covering. Here's why to subscribe. And here's thanking people. I just think that's a lovely flow. You could, doesn't have to be pretty. You can do, I've seen people do this with just photos. Um, or a notes app, writing it in a notes app. Ask your friends to share. So this is Sarah Hoover. When she launched, she had like all of her friends, like it was amazing to see the reshares she got. These don't, oops, these do not have to be pretty. This is literally people screenshotting, writing, <laughs> drawing. Um, you'd be amazed too about like when you start a new project, people are going to want to support you. So also put that call out to have them share 
your new project. That was it. I hope you all got a lot from that class. If there's one thing to take away, it's to just start. So I covered a lot in there, but the most important thing is to start, publish your first post, share it with the world, share it on notes so we can all see it and follow along in your journey and have fun.